I'm joined now by George Norton. George was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia in 2005. Thankfully, he's in remission. And oncologist Dr. John Gribben. Welcome to the program, both of you. John, let's start with you. We're saying that an extremely small study, full results yet to be published, and yet a very high success rate with those who are treated. So what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a very exciting result in terms of the fact that these patients who were on this study were all people who had failed every available therapy. There is no doubt that all of those patients would have been dead uh, because there's no other therapy available for these people. We do like to see a randomized trial where you're going to randomize this treatment versus something else. But for those patients, of course, there was nothing else to randomize it against. Very exciting data. Well, we'll talk to George in, uh, George in just a sec about, about what you've been going through, but it, it's about the blood cancers, about when your immune system isn't working effectively, when, when some bits of your body's cells are fighting other bits. So how then does this help those patients? Well, it's a very attractive proposition for our patients for them to think that their own immune system could be used to fight the cancer, and that's what we're talking about here. By putting these genes into these immune cells, we are arming someone's own immune system. And unlike chemotherapy, which wears out and only works for a few days at a time to kill off those cells, the immune cells, once in the body, will continue to fight the disease. And as long as they persist, you've got an ongoing active treatment. George, you've had chemotherapy, quite intensive chemotherapy. You've had a stem cell transplant, as I say, now in remission and hopefully feeling quite well. Yeah, feeling well. Great. But when you heard about this, what were your thoughts? I thought this does sound exciting. It sounds very promising. Uh, any um, research, any developments that uh, could lead to an alternative treatment, an alternative way to help people like me who get to the point where the options are running out and uh, you're not sure what the future is mm -hmm. going to hold, um, is naturally going to be exciting. Obviously, I have to be a little cautious because as uh, we've been saying, um, there is a long way to go until it becomes a sort of certified definite treatment. But the more research that's going on and having these sorts of early successes, uh, the more chance there will be more options for, for people like me. And what is it like living with cancer and uh, hearing these things? It seems to be, as I say, a new breakthrough every week coming through. Does that give you hope or do you always stand back a little bit and, and remain a bit cautious so as not to, to raise your hopes too high. I agree. I think there's an important balance to be found. Uh, certainly, there's hope. It's, it's more hope, and it, it's always good to see these possibilities. But you don't want to get too carried away uh, until the actual certain treatment is there and ready to be used, uh, because you never quite know what's going to happen. Mm. But it definitely gives you a bit of a boost to know that these things might be on their way. John, how soon do you think it'll be before patients like George have that optimism and think, actually, you know what, this could be a treatment for me and for everybody else like me who's got blood cancer? Well, I think there are huge advances occurring in these cancers all the time. With this specific type of treatment, there are studies which are just about to open in the UK. There's a lot of ethical concerns you have to go through about using gene-modified cells. Those have been overcome. Trials are just about to open in the UK to really try to see how we can exploit this type of treatment. George Norton, Dr. John Gribben, thank you both. Thank you.